Hi, and welcome to OpenLC Solutions. Today we're continuing our journey through the 2014 Ordinary Level Maths paper. And at the moment we're on question four, which is partly an algebra, partly a functions question. The very first part of question four asks us to solve a quadratic equation. And as I've mentioned before, there are tens of ways to solve quadratic equations. My favorite is the, the factorization by grouping method, so I'm gonna continue with that. So I take a look at the coefficient of x squared, which in this case is a one. If you don't see a number there, it means it's a one. And I do a little aside, and I multiply the coefficient of x squared, that is a one, and I multiply that by the constant, which is a minus six, which just gives me a minus six. And then I look for factor pairs of this minus six. So let's say I've got a one and a minus six. I've already work that out based on the, the original question. I've got a two and a minus three. There's a three and a minus two, and there's a six and a minus one. Those are all the factor pairs of minus six. Now, why do I do this? Well, I'm looking for something in particular. I want a particular pair of factors to add to the coefficient of x, which in this case is a minus one. So I add up each pair, and so if I add up the one and the minus six, I get a minus five, if I add two and minus three, there's a minus one, and that's what I'm looking for, but just for the sake of it, let's continue. So we have a three and a minus two gives me a one, and a six and a minus one gives me a five. So as I say, I'm looking for the factor pair that adds to a minus one, and so here's the factor pair, two and minus three. If you add those together, you get minus one. So I take the equation I already had, and I replace the x term, with my two new uh, factors. So instead of minus one X, I have a plus two X and a minus three X, the two and the minus three being the factor pair. Uh, I still have a minus six trailing at the end and I still have an equal zero at the end of this as well. Now I look at each of these in pairs. So if I look at X squared and two X, I say well, what's common between them? And X is the only thing that appears in both of them. So that's the common factor. I do a bracket and I say, well, if I take an x out of the x squared, what's left? Well, there's an x left. And if I factor the x out of 2x, I'm left with plus 2. Next, I look at the second pair, the minus 3x and the minus 6. I say, what's common between those? In this case, the minus 3 is common. So if I factor minus 3 out of minus 3x, I'm left with an x. If I factor minus 3 out of a minus 6, I'm left with a plus 2. So I write that in as well. And I still have this equal zero trailing at the end. That's going to be important later. Next, I look at both of these terms and I see that they have an x plus two in them. And so that's now a common factor. So I can take that out. And if I factor it out of the first term, I'm left with an x. If I factor it out of the minus three times x plus two, I'm left with a minus three. That looks like a six, it's actually a zero. And so, Based on this, I have to say, well, one of these two things has to be zero. I can't multiply two numbers together and get a zero unless one of them is zero. So case one, the first bracket is zero, so x plus two equals zero, in which case x has to be a minus two. This, that's the only way that happens. And case two then is where the second bracket equals zero, so x minus three equals zero, in which case x has to be a three. Part B then gives us the graphs of four quadratic functions, A, B, C, and D. And it actually asks us then, which of the graphs is that of the function x squared minus x minus six? And hopefully this looks familiar to you in a way because the x squared minus x minus six was actually what we had in part A. It was x squared minus x minus six equals zero. So how do we tell which of these graphs represents x squared minus x minus six? Well, you'll notice that we've got two U shapes and two N shapes. So hopefully we should be able to rule out half of these answers by figuring out if the graph is U shaped or N shaped. And we can do that very easily by just looking at the x squared term. So this is a plus x squared. And hopefully you know that a plus x squared means that it's a U shaped graph. If you see minus x squared, then that means it's an N-shaped graph. So we can immediately rule out C and B 
because those are both n-shaped graphs. I can scroll up a little bit so you can see b. You can see that's an n-shaped graph, and so it, it can't be that because we have a plus x squared. So how do we decide between a and d? Well, the only difference really you can see between them is uh, their, their location to the left and to the right. You can see the a crosses at minus 3 and plus 2, whereas d crosses at minus 2 and plus 3 on the x-axis. So where does this function cross? Well, in part a, we actually figured this out because we said, what if x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0? In other words, what if the value of this entire function is 0? When does that happen? And that happens when x is minus 2 and plus 3. So it's the same as asking in terms of functions, where does the function cross the x-axis? And we said that that was when x was minus 2 and plus 3. So between graph a and d, which is that? Well, graph d is crossing at minus 2 and plus 3. And those are the answers we had for part a, minus 2 and plus 3. And so graph d is the only option left. So you need two things to figure out this question. First of all, you need to know it's a U-shaped graph. And secondly, you need to know where does the graph cross the x-axis. So we know it's a U-shaped graph because it's a plus x squared. And we know it crosses the x-axis at minus 2 and plus 3 because those are the answers we got in part A. And so the answer to this one can only be graph D. Part C gives us a graph G of x, which is x squared minus 2x. And we're asked to sketch the graph of two more functions, h of x and k of x, on the same diagram. Now, there's two ways of going about this. One way is just to sort of brute force this and say, well, if h of x is g of x plus 2, we can actually work out then that h of x is x squared minus 2x, which we know is gx, and then add a 2 on and then try out a couple of different values of x and see what happens. We can also say that k of x, everywhere you would have an x in g of x, you replace it with an x plus 2. So instead of x squared, you've got x plus 2 squared. And instead of minus 2x, you've got minus 2 times x plus 2. And you can do all your algebra and try and work that out and then put in a few values of x and see what happens. But that's, that's a lot of extra work compared to what you need to do. This is all about transforming functions. So we know that h of x is the same as g of x, but then you add 2 of on. And since these describe essentially the height of the graph, all we need to do is say, well, if x is minus 2, g of x is 8. So that's the, this point right here. The function for h of x says that it's 2 more than that. So h must exist at 10. 8 plus 2. If we take g of minus 1, that's here, and that has a height of 3, well, h is 2 higher than that, so it must be at 5. And we can continue going through the whole graph like this, just taking each of the points that we can tell from g of x, adding 2 to them, and so we get the shape of h of x pretty easily. And Apologies, these are really difficult to do on a tablet, but hopefully this is going to turn out okay. Out there. There's a, a pretty rough sketch of h of x. k of x is a little bit tougher to figure out. But let's take a look at uh, some particular values and just see what happens. Let's say we're looking for k of 1. This function for k of x tells us that is equal to g of 1, because x is still 1, plus 2, which means it's the same as g of 3. So let me do k in red. When we're at 1 for k, so that's x is 1 here, it has the same height at x equals 1 as g has when x is 3. So when x is 3, g is at a height of 3. You can see it there. And so when x is 1, k is at exactly that same height. And so k is right there. Let's say we take x is 2. So we're looking for k of 2. That's equal to g of 2 plus 2. 
which is the same as g of 4. So when x is 2, k has the same height as g has when x is 4. So when x is 4, g is at this height, 8. And so when x is 2, k has exactly that same height. So here is k. And you can build it up this way. And hopefully after doing just a few of these, you recognize what's happening. It's actually just moving the graph of g over two places to the left. So you can see where g was 4, you just move that over uh, two places in x. When g was 3, you just move that over two places in x and that gets you k. And so we can continue this pattern. So there's k of 0, it's the same as g of 2. Looks like k of minus 1 is the same as g of 1. k of minus 2 is the same as g of 0. k of minus 3 is the same as g of minus 1, which is there. And we can't really go any further to the left, but let's just say uh, minus 4 would be over here. So this is where k would end up. And it, just projecting that point over there can help us to figure out the shape of the curve near minus 3. And so we end up with this kind of shape. Again, apologies for the state of the drawing. It is difficult to do on these graphics tablets. And we end up with something like that. And hopefully, again, you can see that it has pretty much the same shape as G. It's just been moved over two places. And just like to label each sketch clearly. So this is K of X there. So that was question four. Thank you very much for watching. And hopefully I will see you again in question five.